Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a new watch from Oris with the Oris Big Crown Pointer Date Caliber 403. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com as a full authorized dealer. So in this video, deep dive on this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout this video, if you have any further questions, check out the link in the description down below to the product page where you can learn more, purchase the watch and book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. Earlier this year, Oris released the Holstein Edition 2021 Big Crown Pointer Date in a limited run of 250 examples. It debuted a totally refreshed design to the Big Crown Pointer Date family and included their in-house Caliber 403. And now Oris is introducing a regular production model with the same design updates and movement in the company's next step to expand their ever-growing catalog. This one here is coming in with a blue dial variant, also going to come in at a more attainable price compared to the limited edition, and is now in a unique position within in the market, which might be their best work yet when looking at the Caliber 400s. Taking a look at the new Oris Big Crown Pointer date on the wrist, let's go over the case dimensions first. So the diameter is 38 millimeters wide with a moderate thickness of 12.2 millimeters and a lug to lug distance of a rather compact 45.5 millimeters. With regards to the case thickness, the dome sapphire crystal can be attributed to a few extra millimeters to the case height. And from a design perspective, Oris has done a really nice job of matching the curvature of the crystal to the case as if the crystal was cut specifically for it. Overall, the case design is familiar for the Big Crown collection, while the dial aesthetic is more closely related to the Holstein edition for 2021. This simply means that it's a compact watch on the wrist running slightly smaller than the measurements. I would say wears closer to that of a 37 millimeter variant, if not true to size at 38 millimeters. With that being said, I think this model is going to wear well in a wide variety of wrist sizes, especially for the smaller than average ones out there. At the three o'clock case position, we have a large crown, as the name suggests, which is signed with the Oris logo on top and screws down to enhance the water resistance capabilities. But this one is only capable of 50 meters of water resistance. And I think this area of water resistance is one that probably is going to be a common criticism. Not that 50 meters is bad, but 100 meters probably would have been maybe more widely appreciated by consumers, especially given how this one stacks up uh, in the competition and range on many of the other points. Operating the crown is straightforward. Unscrew it to the first position to hand wind the movement on the inside, then extend the crown into the second position to advance the pointer date hand, and finally extend it all the way out to the third position to change the time while stopping the second hand in the process, so hacking seconds here. Just as the case design is familiar for the collection, so too is the finishing, which combines delicately brushed anterior lug surfaces with the polished case sides, the bezel, and the top of the crown. Edges are slightly rounded, providing a refined feel and look to the case. While these edges are softened a bit, the transitions between the different types of finishes are not compromised and there is no bleeding into one another, demonstrating a pretty nice level of care and precision. The lugs measure at 19 millimeters apart and are fitted with a padded matte black leather strap that tapers pretty significantly down to 15 millimeters at a polished pin buckle. Quick release pins are installed, allowing you to quickly swap it out for something else. While these aren't ideal measurements for a strap, especially if you are interested in adding a third party strap to the mix, the quality of this one is pretty solid. Transitioning over to the dial, we are confronted with this double dome sapphire crystal, which has an exaggerated curve as it moves towards the middle. Although it does provide a clear view of the dial below with its internal anti-reflective coating, there is some distortion to the outermost part of the dial depending on the angle at which you are looking at it through. Beneath the crystal sits a dark midnight blue dial that almost turns plum purple and bright light and black in darker environments. It's a very rich and luxurious look that elevates the entire piece, although this one, in terms of the other types of style components, is going to have more of a casual look compared to the cathedral style handset of designs of prior years. Starting with the perimeter of the dial, we have the date designations 1 through 31 with a railway style tracking position just to the inside. It is in this section where we find the triangular superluminova plots at each hour, pointing to the Arabic numerals which are formed from the same luminous material. Dial text is somewhat limited, just to the Oris logo at the 12 o'clock, followed by the big crown name and the five day power reserve reference text just below. At the center of the dial, we have perhaps the biggest change to the look of the big crown pointer date outside of the different text or typography 
of those numerals. It's a set of loom-filled sword hands and triangular pointer date hand that replaces the signature cathedral style hands, which have been a significant part of the big crown aesthetic for decades. I think one thing that people might be concerned with is this going to be the new design style of the big crown pointer date family. As of right now, I have no way of really determining that, but if I had to pinpoint what Oris is doing here, it seems that they're trying to separate these models from their standard Salita caliber variants to offer a bit more variety and more reason behind going for the caliber 400 options, which I think is a good move by them. The loom is decent and provides adequate visibility in low light with the hands glowing more intensely than the dial elements. Gone too is the crescent pointer date hand replaced with a triangular pointer date hand, which again is an element to the design that has been long ingrained into the DNA of the big crown pointer date. But overall, this is the design that's going to have more of a modern look and sportier feel than the cathedral style handset of the Selena versions. And when we turn this watch over, we get a close view of the Caliber 403 through the screw down exhibition case back. It's a large movement for the case occupying most of the available visual real estate. And as a result, the case back is more of a thin bezel than a substantial steel piece that we are typically accustomed to. We are first met with the brush skeletonized rotor with a centralized logo spinning freely in either direction while winding in just one of those directions. Visually, the movement exhibits a a frosty or matte finish, giving it a utilitarian look that is on brand for Oris in the looks department. The difference between the way this caliber is finished versus some of the Sleeta based movements in the catalog is that this is a deliberate finishing process rather than simply lacking any real level of finishing. There's also quite a few movement components on display, including a double barrel system, which provides a healthy 120 hours of power reserve when the movement is fully wound. The balance assembly is also on display and also is a bit more opened up to give a subtle view of the escapement wheel and pallet fork when looking at it from the proper angle. It beats away at four hertz, 28,800 vibrations per hour with a stated accuracy of minus three to plus five seconds a day. The new regulating pin system is a modified take on the traditional design using a tooth arm to precisely regulate the balance wheel when needed. One really important development with this movement and with Oris's in-house movements at large is the warranty program that Oris has set up through my Oris program. When you sign up and register your watch, you get a 10 year warranty with a 10 year recommended service interval, which is in the Rolex territory. That means Oris is very confident in their new product and are willing to stand by it in a way that most other brands are not willing to. And I think this gives a lot of peace of mind when you're talking about new manufactured calibers and how a brand is going to support you down the road. Just to unpack here, looking at the general specifications for the movement, 28,800 vibrations per hour for the beat rate for Hertz, looking at hacking and hand winding on this very so hacking, stopping the second hand when you pull the crown to the farthest position and a very long power reserve of 120 hours. So now to unpack looking at this Oris Big Crown Pointer Date Caliber 403. So when I have to pinpoint my favorite model from Oris in general, there's a lot of models that I do like, or just maybe looking at one specific collection as a whole, it's actually the Oris Big Crown Pointer Date family. I have just always loved the styling and I think it's uniquely positioned. I love the use of a pointer date as a complication. It's something that you typically see on higher end dress watches. And I think Oris has adapted that style and design into a everyday uh, styled watch, which I think just really works. And most brands haven't been able to pull this off the same way. Looking at the traditional Salita models, I love the cathedral handset and really what those models are going for, for kind of looking back to the era in which the original was created. This one is going to be different. And when it's going for more of a contemporary perspective, that might push some people away. But why I think that this might be the best caliber 400 yet, uh, even better than the limited edition model, is really coming down to where this is positioned in the market. Now with the Oris Aquas and say the Oris Diver 65, talking about dive watches in the three to $4,000 range, Simply put, there are just way more options out there and competitors that make them not as much of a no-brainer, maybe as much as being on a short list. I think they're still there, but there are some very, very worthy competitors in that range as well. When you look at a watch like this, I think it's a bit more uniquely positioned in the market. And this one's also going to be cheaper than that of the limited edition model at $3,900, this one at $3,400, which I think really does help it out. Finishing on the case and hands are pretty straightforward 
forward, but very solid for the price. And I love how the movement is filling up the entire case back. It just looks like it was made to be fit within a watch like this. I think some are going to appreciate, and even myself, I, I do like the classic charm of the uh, cathedral style handset of the previous designs. And I'm not sure where Oris is going to go uh, with that style versus this and how they're going to position both of these style and designs within their catalog. But one thing that I think is smart here is they are trying to freshen up and change what they're offering from the Caliber 400 series versus their traditional Salita models. I think this offers consumers a different approach and just a recognizable trait on the outside when wearing a watch that is different than the lesser expensive Salita variants. And I think that is a good move by the brand here. A couple things on the negative side, the 19 millimeters, the loom is a little bit uh, just kind of middle road in terms of its performance and the water resistance might not be up to par for some people out there. But in terms of the total package, I think Oris really nailed this design. I'd like to see more uh, dial colors available in the future. And I like how they're starting to differentiate what they're doing with the Caliber 400s compared to the more attainable Salita variants within their collections. And when you're looking at $3,400, around three grand for a watch like this, I think this one is more uniquely positioned compared to the other Caliber 400s to date. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel. Really would appreciate that as well. But also, if you're in the market for this watch, it is available on teddybaldasar.com. Teddybaldasar.com is a full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also offer a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer to give you a lot of peace of mind. In addition, we also offer price matching. So if you see one of our watches for cheaper at another authorized dealer, just fill out the form and we'll get in touch with you. And finally, all this content that we create here helps fund our future productions here on this channel, as well as on our main channel, trying to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.